Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Function Foundations Lesson 7, Key Features of Functions Homework Review Part 2. And we're picking up from question number one. We uh, finished parts A through D, and so we're picking up E. If you haven't a chance to uh, watch the first video on this, please go back and check. There are some notes that we discussed, uh, including the definition of zeros, as well as increasing, decreasing for a function. And of course, relative and uh, relative maximum minimums. So just in case we kind of go over that as well too. So uh, same graph as before. And so we're E, uh, over which intervals is f of x less than zero? And, and so when we see a question like this, um, over which intervals is f of x less than zero? We're really gonna say, where is it? Where is the y value negative below the x-axis? And so, we're going to take a look here, and we'll see in this case, below the x-axis will be this part of the graph here. Right? So, between these two x values. All right? Now, the graph, which graph is kind of v-shaped, but is between this interval here, along the x's that we're looking for. And we see in this case, this is going to be at negative 5. And this is going to be at, looks like, positive 2. Now, we're not including the points because, in this case, at negative 5, x was negative 5, and x was positive 2, those were zeros, where the, where the y value was equal to 0. We're looking for the values of x, where an interval, in this case, where they're not equal to 0, but less than 0. So we cannot include choice 4. Okay, the reason is at negative 5 and at 2, they're not going to be less than 0. They're equal to 0. So we can't have that one. And between 2 and 7, that doesn't make any sense either uh, because that's above the x-axis. So again, you see here, when we see this, no, this is really going to be below the x-axis. Okay, where is the graph below the x-axis? And so... We take a look at number choice one. Negative seven is less than x, less than negative three. Well, it definitely between negative five and negative three, we have below the x-axis, but not including negative seven. So definitely not this. It is definitely going to be between, uh, choice three here. Negative five is less than x, is less than two. Okay. So uh, for question F, right? So just in case we're in questions before E, we're looking for the parts where the graph is below the x-axis. So now we're going to be using, uh, for f, a second function, g of x, is defined using the rule g of x equals 2 f of x plus 5. Evaluate g of 0 using this rule. What does it correspond to on the graph of g? Okay, so here, in this case, we want to find here, it says here, uh, g of 0. Well, g of 0... according to the rule, is 2 times f of 0 plus 5. So we're going to take a look at f of 0. Now, f of 0 is going to be, well, when the y value, when x equals 0. And so that will be at neg 2. So that equals to 2 times neg 2 plus 5. Well, g of 0 is equal to neg 4 plus 5 or equal to 1. So on the graph of G, that point would be at 0, comma, 1. Okay? So what we do, we plug in like we normally do. Oops. And so in this case, uh, what we want to do is we want to say, well, what does it correspond? We want to find the coordinate where it matches. And so where is 0, 1? Well, this would be when x equals 0, y equals 1. Well, we have a name for that, okay? That would be, in this case, oops, the font's too big. We need a smaller font, sorry. So here we go. This would be the y-intercept. Of g of x. Why? If you remember in this case, ladies and gentlemen, that the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. Okay, and so now I, I, you know, for my picture, it's not that perfect and all, but the idea is that zero, basically zero comma two. Uh, so in this case, uh, when x equals zero, y equals negative two. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the matching point. But when we plug everything in, we get zero comma one, zero comma one. 
okay, which is the y-intercept of g of x. So that's what we're trying to say here. Not just any point, just but that is going to be one of those special points on our graphs, x-intercepts, y-intercepts in this case. And then finally, for the last part of question number one, this is a big question. Though. A third function, function, h of x, is defined by the formula h of x equals x cubed minus 3. Okay, what is the value of g of h of 2? Okay, so here we go. So this is a composition of functions, so we got to kind of set this up a little bit, right? So now I need to go back to our graph here a bit later on. So to find g of h of 2, what we want to do is first find h of 2. All right, so h of 2 really is going to be 2 to the third minus 3. All right, so 2 to the third minus 3 is going to be 8 minus 3, which is 5. Okay, so we will take this number and plug it into g. This is h of 2 equals 5. We'll find g of 5. But if you remember, g of 5, the function g, going back to our previous problem, is 2 f of x plus 5. So that would mean that we'll have 2 times f of 5 plus 5. So now let's go back to the graph and find f of 5. Okay, so f of 5, let's take a look now. f of 5 is going to be at, let's see now, 1, 3, 4, 5. f of 5 is at a y value of 3, so 5 comma 3. So f of 5, bring this back down. So f of 5 is equal to 3. So 2 times 3 plus 5, that's equal to 6 plus 5, or 11. So in the end, our answer of g of h of 2 gives us a value of 11. Okay, I'm going to make this full page so you guys can take a look at the whole thing here. Okay, so we have used the our, our work from we did previously for um, the for the uh, composite functions, and that being the case, we're able to apply that in our in our problem here where we're using the graph. And this whole thing is just kind of like figuring out uh, values from a graph of a function. And so that's where our question number one is really testing stuff. Okay, all right. So uh, in this case. Um, we're going to stop here for part, for part one and for part two, actually. Um, and we'll come back to question number two on our next part. This is kind of a pretty involved uh, uh, unit uh, question section in this case, um, because this is so the, so the end of the unit for, uh, for our function foundation. So we're kind of you know, doing some more complex stuff. But the, uh, I hope we guys review this because this is very important to be able to recognize functions or graphs and all and apply these because a lot of times students get a little bit kind of rattled when you have more than one idea being applied at the same time though. All right. All right. So in any case, thank you so much uh, for watching and you watched to the very end. I uh, hope this was helpful to you guys. If you found this helpful, please give this video a like. Really appreciate it. Also, also, if you have not done so, subscribe to the channel to know when new videos are going to be added on because I want to make sure I get through the entire Algebra 2 section and all, maybe uh, go back into some previous stuff, maybe also do some concepts, you know, not necessarily tied to just homework, but um, just in this topics that have to do with mathematics. Uh, so for those of you who are taking Algebra 2, the next level is going to be, hopefully going to be um, pre-calc. And so a lot of the stuff in pre-calc does come from our previous studies, though. Anyway, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for, for uh, you know, just willing to listen to, uh, to my channel, and hopefully this helped out, all right? Anyway, I'll see you next video. Take care of yourselves and be safe.